Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again uh, to the new lecture of uh, fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics. So let us just briefly see what we did in the last lecture. So in the last lecture we wrote uh, equations in the vectorial form for pyroelectric effect. Where we described a quantity P i which is nothing but change in spontaneous polarization vector upon change in the temperature. Okay. So, this is and pyroelectric effect is a very useful effect as we will see later on in terms of various applications. And then we also looked at what we called as uh, the electrostrictive electrostriction which is very similar to piezoelectric effect which again correlates the strain uh, with respect to so let us say this was m i j k l e k e l ok so this is again change in the dimension or a, or a strain generated as a function of applied electric field the proportionality construct, uh, constant is the electrostriction coefficient which is a fourth rank tensor and uh, this is sort of related to piezoelectric effect so uh, and it is, but it is present in all the materials irrespective of their symmetry so uh, even a piezo non piezoelectric material will show this effect. So, that is why there is a distinction between the two because one occurs in non centrosymmetric materials which is piezoelectric effect whereas, this effect purely occurs in the uh, this effect occurs in all sorts of materials. And then we looked at we started looking at the thermodynamic basis of Uh, basis of how these properties are coupled to each other okay and that is very important to understand if you want to make uh, if you want to evaluate them and make measurements in a correct fashion so what we wrote was we were we wrote that the change in entropy du was tds plus capital xij silen ij change in inter, so internal energy sorry not entropy so this is du is equal to tds plus uh, let us not let us write the conventions which are little plus E i d d i okay. and then we wrote the free energy expression uh, u minus T s minus x i j small x i j minus E i d i. Okay. And then we differentiated this function to calculate the different to work out the differential dg, and this is du uh, minus tds minus sdt minus xij t small xij minus small xij d of capital xij minus of ei d of di minus of di into d of ei. Okay. So, when you put in now du in the ex expression, so we get dg as minus of s d t minus of x i j d x capital X i j minus of d i into d e i. Okay. So, from this equation we obtain a few things and what are those few things? We first obtain entropy. S and what it means is that at constant stress and electric field. So, when you take constant stress and constant electric field which means these two terms will vanish and we can correlate entropy as minus of del G by del T. Similarly, when stress when, when, you, when you, you have temperature as constant electric field as constant then we can calculate the strain and the strain is nothing but del G divided by del of capital X i j. So, 
that will give you the strain at constant temperature and constant electric field. Similarly, at constant temperature and constant electric field, what we will obtain, constant stress, what we will obtain is the surface charge density or charge density. So, using these expressions, we can obtain S as minus of del G by del T capital X E. So, these are all subscripts, superscripts, subscripts are basically constant parameters, right. All right. Second, we obtain uh, for uh, strain that is a small x i j and this small x i j can be written as minus of del g by del capital X i j at constant temperature and electric field. And third, we can obtain is the charge density. d i which can be written as d i as minus of del g by del e, del e i at constant temperature and stress. So, these are partial differentials of free energy at with respect to temperature or stress or electric field at other two parameters being constant which are related to which depict the entropy, the strain and the uh, charge density. You can also write the total differential form. So, the total differential would be so basically you would like to let us say express entropy in terms of all the three parameters. So, what will entropy be in terms of all the three parameters? So, when you write this total differential form. So, let us say first we write for entropy. So, d s is equal to the first term will be del s by del t at constant stress and electric field and this will be multiplied by d t. Second term will be del s divided by del x i j at constant temperature and electric field into d x i j and the third term will be del of s with respect to E i constant temperature and stress into d of E i. Now, what is this term del s by del t? C you write C, what is this C? You call it this is heat capacity what is this del s by del x? This is called as this is a change in entropy upon change in the stress this is called as piezo caloric. So, this term depicts piezo caloric effect. This term is change in entropy upon electric field this is called as electro caloric effect. Now, if you look at the strain in total differential form we can write d x i j is equal to del x i j divided by del t at constant stress and electric field into d t plus del of x i j with respect to del of capital X i j at constant temperature and electric field into del d of x i j sorry x in this case it will be since these are the first case it was i j yeah in, the, in this case it will be k l and this will be i j yeah because elastic properties are different as compared to entropy and uh, um, and here it will be del of x i j divided by del of e k t capital X d of e k. Okay. So, you have to take the coupling and measurement and the response in appropriate directions otherwise it will not be right. So, what is 
strain versus temperature sorry strain this is dimensionless this is temperature delta t so this is the unit is kelvin inverse what is the un, what is the parameter which is of kelvin inverse value or dimension that is thermal expansion what is this strain divided by stress elastic compliance and what is this there is sort of indirect piezoelectric effect right converse piezo effect and when you write the similar expression for let's say now for the charge density we can write d di to be equal to del of di divided by del of t at capital so dt plus del of di divided by del of x jk t constant temperature and constant electric field d of x ij plus del of di divided by del of ej at constant temperature and stress d of ej this is what is this change in surface charge density as a as a function of temperature pyroelectric coefficient right this is pyroelectricity what is the change in surface charge density as a function of stress piezo direct piezo right and what is this change in dielectric constant uh, the surface charge density as a function of electric field this is just dielectric effect plane linear dielectric effect right so these are basically each partial derivative is basically a physical phenomena as we see each of them all nine of them show one or other kind of physical effect that we have just seen in past few lectures and uh, and many of them can be also correlated using various other arguments for example if you now want to uh, express um, dijk at constant temperature and st stress so how can you write this dijk at constant temperature and stress this can be written as del of xij divided by del of ek right at constant temperature uh, and stress right so there is no confusion about that how do you write this now we can write this as minus of we know that strain can be written in the form of in this fashion so this can be written as minus of del 2g del of ek into del of x ij right this can also be written as minus of del 2g divided by del of capital x ij into del of e k and what does this become this becomes equal to del of dk divided by del of xij if you now make the replacement for d in the form of free energy because we see that free energy change for d is del g divided by del i so if you now make the appropriate substitution you will get del dk divided by del xij what is this this is a constant temperature in electric field and this becomes d k i j t e so basically what it says is that thermodynamically speaking indirect and direct effect are nothing but the same this is sort of a equivalence of direct versus indirect piezoelectric effect although they are manifested in different forms thermodynamically thermodynamically speaking they are nothing but the same whether you see uh, you know picometer per volt or whether you see pico coulomb per newton the, the the manifestation is different but the effects are the same so thermodynamically speaking okay so 
this is what it is uh, you can correlate other properties as well which I am not going to do here. In reality in, in practice they are represented in slightly different forms. So, uh, for example, the you can say um, common commonly expressed forms. So, let us say commonly expressed forms for so basically for small uh, you can say these are for small changes in uh, delta s or delta e or delta x very small changes ok. So, for these small changes uh, delta t sorry. Uh, so, we see delta s as c small c x e divided by t into delta t plus alpha i j t e x i j plus p i t comma x e i does it make any does it ring the bell if you look at it now we wrote earlier delta d s as heat capacity into d t piezo caloric coefficient multiplied by d x i j electro caloric coefficient multiplied by d e i and the form in which we are writing them now is is this. So, this is the small change in temperature stress and electric field and these are the coefficients. So, this is C x e divided by T this is alpha i j alpha i j is nothing but that we measured here in this form this is alpha i j ok. Alpha i j is basically you can say thermal expansion tensor and then this is P i T x uh, so, this is for change in entropy. Similarly, you can write for x i j, x i j can be written as alpha i j x e delta t plus small s i j k l t e x k l plus d k i j e k e k and this is at t x. So, they are all at different. Uh, so, this is for x e, this is for t e being constant, this is for t x being constant. Similarly, you can write for d i, this will be equal to p i x e delta t plus d i j k x j k at constant temperature and electric field plus plus epsilon i j t x e j. So, these are basically sort of integrated forms that we write for earlier we wrote the differential forms now we have written what we call as integrated forms of these ok and these are the commonly written forms. So, here we can see that alphas are all all the alphas that you are seeing they are thermal expansion coefficients c is the um, specific heat ok. S is elastic stiffness right or, or comp and uh, S was I think uh, compliance so, like I cannot remember what it is, but this is related to uh, capital X. So, this is compliance ok and then we have pyroelectric coefficient and then we have piezoelectric coefficient. So, all these parameters written in these integrated and the superscripts in all the cases X e T e and T x they mean that these are the constant variables ok. These are the constant parameters they cannot be variable they, they have to, so these are all constant parameters. So, in the in the first you can see then the first column temperature is varied stress and electric field are kept constant. In the second column stress is varied temperature and electric field are kept constant in the third column 
electric field is varied and the temperature and stress are varied okay now these relations are basically for generally linear materials only when you go for non linear effects such as ferroelectrics then they consist of higher order terms which are not present here so so essentially these are valid only for linear dielectrics linear effects you can say not linear effects dielectrics but we will say linear effects only in the linear region but with the moment you go to non linear region uh, they become slightly different you have to include higher order terms which we have not so when you write for for example for piezoelectric materials so these equations uh, when you write um, uh, in the matrix notation for piezoelectric let's say these are called the constitutive equations so for a piezoelectric this strain xm becomes small s m n m n at constant temperature and electric field capital xn plus d i m t x e i so these are there are two notations you might be aware in mat in the linear algebra matrix notation the void notation so basically if you write them in the matrix notation this is how you write them so uh, you can see that instead of x i j you are writing x m when i is not equal to j okay so this for stress uh, strain and then for dielectric displacement you write this as d of i m t e uh, x m plus epsilon i j uh, superscript t x e j so basically you can see that if you want to have pure piezoelectric strain then you need to have zero stress okay so pure piezoelectric strain which is because of only electric field then this component must be equal to zero because you can see that strain here has a stress term as well as electric field term whereas earlier we defined it to consist of only stress only electric field the indirect effect right so if you want to if you if you want to purely if you want to measure the pure piezoelectric strain which means the stress must be equal to zero you are only taking as if similarly if you want to measure the charge pure charge then the electric field must be equal to zero and your stress must be finite okay so so these are called as piezoelectric constitutive equations so if you read any book on piezoelectricity they will use these equations so there are uh, i mean you can write them in details um, if you if you combine all the thermodynamic potentials you can write various constitutive equations total of 6 if you if include all the combinations of thermodynamic potentials etc you will get six more such is such equations we have written just two which are of most uh, importance but you can write many others uh, as well so i think what we have done until now is basically to sort of provide you a feel of mathematical framework in which these properties are expressed so we started with basically tensor notations and these tensor notations are basically you need to read little bit about matrix and tensors so as i said earlier if you have a, a, a tensor is expressed as the formula 3 to the power n so n is equal to 0 will mean it's a scalar 1 will mean it's a vector and greater than 2 it will mean it will a, it is a tensor so of course the life becomes very difficult as you go to uh, 9 27 81 components but uh, things are made easier by thermodynamic considerations and symmetry considerations and other factors such as stress and strain tensors being symmetric in nature 
uh, as a consequence the total number of independent components in each tensor reduces substantially. For example, modulus which is, which is a fourth rank tensor will contain 81 components, it reduces to much lower numbers determ determined by symmetry and thermodynamic arguments. Similarly, in case of uh, susceptibility and piezoelectric coefficient, the numbers go down dramatically um, because of, uh, in, for example, in case of piezoelectricity, because of symmetry of stress, the numbers go down from 27 to 18 and they can be further lower um, on the depending, depending upon the crystal symmetry and thermodynamic arguments. So, essentially, we looked at, um, uh, as I said, various properties, dielectric properties, then we looked at mechanical properties basically elastic properties, we looked at piezoelectric properties, we looked at pyroelectric properties and we looked at electrostructive properties and then the, in the end we coupled them together using thermodynamic make arguments right in the form of free energies and those equations the partial equations that we developed they are called they are all called as Maxwell equations. There are many of them there are uh, uh, total of 27 Maxwell equations you can write we, we have written just a few of them uh, any any book on classical thermodynamics will take you through those 27 expressions we wrote just a few which were useful to us in the context of this course um, it's it's far more difficult topic than we have just in this case but I just wanted to you to get introduced to how they are written in exact forms so uh, in the next lecture now we will continue with the with, uh, with the discussion on ferroelectrics because we have not talked about them. So, we look at what ferroelectrics are, what is their temperature dependence, what kind of phase transitions ferroelectrics are associated with, uh, what is ferroelectric switching like, what is the ferroelectric hysteresis loop, what is the effect of domains and things like that. And then finally, we will look at the applications of all the three materials. We will take up a few cases where we will see how these effects are practically used in making devices. So, we stop here. Thank you very much.